Hey guys, this is Ed from Experimental Airlines unveiling the resurrection of the flagship Experimental Airlines plane, the Ansley Peace Drone. This was an airplane design that I came up when I very first got into FPV and I needed something with a pusher motor with the nose free for FPV gear. It needed to be foam board. I wanted a large wingspan that was stable and efficient and I called it the Peace Drone. The original idea was to make a sort of predator-like plane with a V-tail and a standard plan form with the camera up front, but I found it incredibly hard to get the center of gravity in the right position without putting the wing way far back to the tail, uh, and therefore I just decided to flip it around, make a new wing section, put that in the front and the main wing in the rear, get rid of the tail, and make a canard. I came up with the idea of peace drone for a couple of reasons. One is I was using a roll of a tie-dye tape. This is the original actual peace drone fuselage right here. And uh, it's a drone in the sense that a couple of years ago, the term drone wasn't quite as negative as it is now. And I like the kind of juxtaposition of peace and drone. And uh, it's done well until now that the word drone is kind of frowned upon in the RC community. So I'd like to give it a little bit of a name revision. So I'd now like to suggest the name Ansley Peace Drone for this aircraft. Ansley is my three-year-old daughter and I love her very much. And I, I like the idea of her having peace in her lifetime, but I don't want to get rid of the original Peace Drone name altogether and so this will open up some options for calling it the Ansley PD or the APD or the Ansley Peace Drone or just the Ansley. We'll see what builders come up with. In any case this is a very easy to build plane and I will be doing uh, build videos. I won't necessarily show each of the sub techniques because this is literally just an ordinary arm and wing in two sections with or without a removable spar and a third arm and wing section. It doesn't even have any control surface. It's just capped ends reinforced with a gift card here at the rear where the rubber band goes over the trailing edge. Same for the main wing right here. It has ordinary foam board or Depron vertical stabilizers. And I've chosen to make these square just for simplicity, as well as to just embrace the squareness of this plane. It's square in every way. It has 90 degree angles, but there would be nothing wrong at all with sweeping this up. I also have used the vertical stabilizer as the mount for my uh, Dragon Link receiver antenna. So it's 30 inches away from the nearest electrical component. And once I put the video gear on the nose, it'll be you know, that much further away from it for a very clear radio frequency environment for the receiver, as well as the video transmitter. Depending on how equipped, this plane could be built about 900 grams just for a fun flyer with one or two 2200 milliamp hour uh, three cell packs on up to about 2000 grams would be my maximum recommended weight. It has only the two elevons, so two servos, very low current draw from those and very simple to uh, hook up when the wing is mounted. And of course, there's no control surface or wiring to the canard unless you decide to put your video transmitter in the canard to keep it even further separate. I've designed this as a belly lander. It's very easy to grasp and uh, hand launch. I've experimented with some landing gear and it was kind of a mixed success. I found for my uses, the additional weight and complexity was not really worth it. Um, so that would be up to the builder's discretion. It does of course leave the nose wide open for camera gear. You could put a small FPV camera right inside or a GoPro like this right in the nose and the entire plane would pretty much fall behind the uh, profile of the camera. Here I've just got a little uh, lead ballast to simulate the camera for flight testing. You'll see that the main structural component for the wing tie downs and the rigidity of the fuselage consists of these two carbon arrow shafts. These happen to be six millimeters and they extend from the very nose right to the very tail here and they serve as the rubber band tie downs so the rubber bands originate from inside the fuselage at each of these dual hatches and go over the wing and over the wing there. You can see the shafts stay nice and nestled up against the sides of the fuselage so they're well out of the way. This would be the main battery compartment here and an auxiliary battery compartment or video gear could go here and that's nice and accessible. The reason I went with two hatches is to allow separation of the components, but also it allows stiffening the central part and that I found helps to mitigate some of the torsional effect, but still allow very good access through both of these hatches individually to the components that are inside. Here is where the receiver goes, in my case, and I've elected to install the speed controller in the bottom of the uh, fuselage in the rear so that it's, it's nice and flush with the rear, but still receives good airflow. This uh, ramping technique helps to Im improve the smooth airflow to the propeller and reduces noise. Although with the 
propeller only a, a couple of inches behind the trailing edge of the wing, it does make that characteristic buzzing uh, pusher propeller noise to some extent. Center of gravity is typically with this two to one wing ratio between the main wing and the canard. Center of gravity is 15 inches aft of the nose or ahead of that. So the most um, efficiency is gained from putting it right in the center of the fuselage fore and aft. Additional stability comes from moving that a little bit farther forward. This one has a two inch nominal fuselage, so the outer diameter is actually about two and a half inches. And I've used a five inch cord for the canard and a five inch cord for the main wing and a one and a half inch control surface as elevons. This is a good fun flower size, perfectly capable of lofting a GoPro or any FPV camera you choose and gets about 20 minutes flight time uh, at the park. That is with aggressive maneuvering round and around circuits, loops and rolls and so forth with two 2200 milliamp or three cell batteries. Here's the larger version, which is a two and a half inch nominal fuselage. So it's two and a half inches inside, three inches on the outside, seven inch cord with a one and a half inch elevon, seven inch cord uh, canard with three formers in each to provide the airfoil shape. This is more the heavy lifter. I have a larger power plant, which I'll discuss in the uh, build videos. It has a larger internal capacity. It could quite easily fit uh, four, probably six of those packs if you wanted to. Um, this one glides a bit better due to the increased wing surface area, but of course some of that is uh, mitigated by increased payload. Um, the performance was, I would say, if anything, a bit smoother, like driving a Cadillac with this one, and the other one was sportier and more nimble. This one has a Turnigy NTM Prop Drive 3442, 1250 kV motor, and with a 10x6 prop, uh, gives it adequate uh, power for takeoff and cruising. For the smaller, I've used the Turnigy NTM Prop Drive 3536, 1400 kV with a 10x5 prop, and this has a nearly one to one thrust to weight ratio with this plane uh, with a nominal FPV uh, payload attached. So welcome back Ansley Peace Drone. Stay tuned for additional build and detail videos on this plane. Hope you'll consider building one as your uh, medium to long range uh, cruiser or for FPV or just a fun, weird looking plane to fly around the park. Um, it definitely gets some attention. Um, bystanders will clearly come up and say, hey, your plane's flying backwards, crazy stuff like that. Um, but uh, it's been a lot of fun for me so far and uh, I look forward to seeing some of your creations too. Take care, blue skies, good health. Bye for now.